Hi, and welcome everybody to this presentation about the distributions three package. I will show you how to use that package for basic probability, especially in an introductory statistics context, but also to move beyond that and use it for probabilistic regression. My name is Achim Zeileis and this is joint work together with our former postdoc Moritz Lang, we are both from Universität Innsbruck and with Alex Hayes, who started the project. To give you a little bit of context, um, Alex started with a project around about three years ago and uh, designed it to be a project uh, with S3 objects for probability distributions. And that's the same object orientation system also used for data frames or linear models in base R. And from the very beginning, it was geared towards um, teaching introductory statistics to make it easy for beginners to adopt the package. Um, so it had to be well documented and um, easy to get started. And very early on, there were uh, quite a few contributions from various people, including Ralph Malatrain, Daniel Jordan, Paul Northrop, among a few others. Moritz and myself joined the project a little bit later and we came from a rather different angle. We were interested in working with probabilistic regression models. So we had a need for representing not just um, a single um, probability distribution, but a whole sequence of probability distributions, a vector of probability distributions that we, we can use in a regression context where, for example, every observation in a data frame has a different mean and variance uh, but come from a normal distribution. And um, we wanted to use that specifically to, to work with uh, visualizations of goodness or fit of such models. And I will show you an example for that also later on. But first, let's have a look at the basic design of the package. There are a class constructor functions uh, for many well-known distributions, normal, Poisson, binomial, and so on. And they return as three objects. These are essentially data frames of parameters, albeit with a different um, class inheriting from the class distribution. But for a normal distribution, for example, we have two variables, the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. And we could just have a single row in our data frame corresponding to a single distribution, or we could have a whole sequence of rows con for, um, corresponding to potentially different distributions. And then based on these distributions, uh, we can apply standard methods um, like um, extracting the mean, the quantile, computing probabilities or simulating random values. And you might say, well, we, we have all these standard DPQR functions for density, probability, quantile and random values from a distribution. And this is actually what we use under the hood. But we give it a different interface, an object-oriented interface, where you have um, the object that knows which distribution it is, and then you can extract the standard quantities. Whereas with the standard functions, you always need to pick the function for the specific distribution. So you need to pick D norm or D binom and so on. And uh, that is separated now into two steps. And to show you how this works in practice, um, let's look at the Poisson distribution as a classic example for modeling count data. And in an introductory statistics course, you might say, well, this distribution has support on the positive integers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And it is characterized by a parameter lambda corresponding to the mean and coincidentally also the variance of the distribution. And then you might introduce um, the probability mass function and say, well, let's uh, start um, computing with that and uh, compute a few probabilities, for example. And we can do the same in distributions three now. So where we would say um, y is distributed like a Poisson distribution with a lambda of 1.5, we now say y um, is a Poisson distribution with a lambda of 1.5 after loading the distributions three package, of course. And then we can print that distribution or we can um, evaluate uh, the probabilities by using the PDF, the probability density function, and um, uh, do that on the counts from zero to five, for example. There is also an alias PMF for the discrete distributions, if that is desired. And then we can move on, we can extract the mean and variance, which for the Poisson distribution are identical. 
and we can compute uh, the um, cumulative distribution function, we can extract quantiles, and we can simulate random values. And um, all of this works in exactly the same way if y were normal or binomial, for example. So this opens up um, a lot of unified computations. And let me show you an applied example that you might use in class to illustrate what this is about. And um, we're looking at the goals scored by the two teams in all of the 64 matches in the 2018 FIFA World Cup. And after loading the package, um, the variable we're most interested in is uh, the goals variable. And we have two rows for every um, match. So the first match in that um, Soccer World Cup was between host Russia and Saudi Arabia and ended 5-0 for Russia. And then uh, the other games um, uh, follow. And um, in addition to this um, match information we, ha we have here, we also have a variable called logability, which is et actually a prediction of the team's log abilities or abilities on log scale that uh, we have derived based on bookmakers odds prior to the tournament. But we will come back uh, to that variable a little bit later. First, we will only look at the goals variable. And then we might start out with fitting a basic distribution. We can just compute the mean number of goals scored across all teams, which is 1.3 and uh, then set up um, a Poisson distribution with that lambda parameter and uh, get a corresponding Poisson distribution object back. And here we would now assume that all teams have the same average number of goals scored in every game, which is a very simplistic model, um, but uh, let's see how well that's, uh, that fits. Oh, and I should mention, um, as an alternative interface, you could also use the fit MLE um, function to fit the maximum likelihood estimate here. But now we want to look how well the model uh, fits this very simple one Poisson distribution for all goals. And then we look at the observed table of the goals and compute the empirical observed proportions from that and compare that with the um, expected frequencies from this one constant uh, Poisson distribution on the counts from zero to six. And then we can uh, row bind these observed and expected frequencies together, convert them to percentages to make them a little bit easier to read. And um, we can visualize the table with a bar plot. And this shows that the observed frequencies in dark gray and the expected ones in light gray are pretty close. It's not a perfect match, but um, it shows that um, the Poisson model is not completely unreasonable. But of course, it's not a good idea to say all teams in all matches have the same number of expected goals. There will be stronger and weaker teams, and um, it will also depend on how strong your opponent is in a match. So we move on and now look at Poisson regression model that explains the number of goals per team by the ability difference between the two teams. And this ability was derived by us based on bookmaker sorts. So we fit a GLM for goals explained by the difference in abilities for the FIFA data set using a Poisson distribution and the resulting object M, the model object, can then be summarized. Here, I'm only extracting the coefficient tests um, because this is what I'm most interested in here. And I can see that this ability difference is indeed um, associated with a positive slope and clearly significant. So this shows that the bigger the difference uh, is of your ability to your opponent's ability, the higher the number of expected goals um, you score as a team. And um, then we can um, take that uh, the fitted values from, from this model and uh, we get actually 128 different means for the, um, the 125, uh, 28 um, goals in the 64 matches. And each of these is not just a predicted mean, it's associated with predicted Poisson distribution. And we can sit 
set that up as before. Now we get a vector of Poisson distributions. And here I'm just showing you the, uh, the first six. And for example, the uh, Poisson distribution for Russia in the first match and uh, Saudi Arabia in the first match has a different mean, um, meaning that um, Russia was expected to score more goals than um, Saudi Arabia. And in a second, we will look at how this affects the probabilities to score no goals, one goal, two goal, and so on. Before, I want to uh, quickly uh, mention that there's also a convenience function, ProDist, for extracting this fitted probability distribution from a model object, which you can also apply out of a sample on new data frame. And in any case, this um, returned Poisson distribution object um, opens up the path to unified and simplified uh, computations. These might be domain specific, probabilities of match results, win, draw, lose, or we could also look at refined regression models for the expected goals and associate these with distribution objects. And this was our perspective um, when Moritz and I um, joined the project, we wanted to look at general modeling. We wanted to look at probabilistic forecasts and how well the models fit to the data. And here I will show an example for the latter question. We want to know, is this model that we fitted, this Poisson model for the goals, is this well calibrated? Does it conform um, with the empirical data? For this, we compare again observed and expected frequencies. Like before, we use PDF, on our 128 observation Poisson object uh, for the counts from 0 to 6. And this gives us a 128 by 7 matrix. And here we look at the first few rows. And for our example, we can see that Russia in the first game had only a 17% probability, while Saudi Arabia had a 42% probability for scoring no goals. And also the, the other probabilities are different. So to see whether on average these expected frequencies match the observed frequencies, we um, average each of these columns and then we can visualize them again in a kind of bar plot. But we do a slight variation of what we did before. It's actually good to plot the things on a square root scale to make the large and small frequencies easier to compare. And um, this display is also known as a rootogram. And here I'm creating this rootogram from scratch in base R using the bar plot function. And I'll plot the square root of the observed and the square root of the expected. And actually, I take the expected line, the, the red one, and I hang the observed bars from the expected line. And the result of that is that I see the deviations um, at the bottom, at the x-axis, and it makes it a little bit easier whether we have systematic mismatches or not. And here we see that there are some deviations, but they are not huge. The model seems to fit reasonably well. And um, in the top models package, we do exactly the same thing um, under the hood. We just say rootogram m, but behind the scenes, something very close to this code happens. And also, if ggplot2 is loaded, rootogram actually uses ggplot2 graphics. Um, if it's not loaded, it uses base graphics. So you can get both of these. And in addition to the rootogram, we have the PIT histogram, uh, the PIT histogram, a randomized quantile uh, residual, QQ plots, warm plots, reliograms, um, and so on. Um, to, to judge whether your model fits well. And all of these work in an object-oriented way. As a brief outlook, where do we want to go from here? We want to add more support for different distributions and distribu dis different models in distributions three. In top models, we want to fully leverage the distributions three infrastructure. We're not quite there yet and finish our introductory vignettes. Um, moreover, I would be specifically interested in adding an interface to scoring rules from the scoring rules package, but I didn't get around to doing that yet. 
If you're interested uh, more in the packages, both of them have package down web pages on GitHub for distributions three and on RForge for top models. And um, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me on Twitter or you can go to my web page. And on my web page, I'm also sharing a copy of these slides if you're interested in it. Thank you very much.